Well, it turns out, if you buy protein supplement for any of these international brands, or any of the other famous international brands, chances are 95% it's going to be fake if you buy it in India. Or is it? If you want to find out a logical answer to this, please continue watching the video. There is this trend in Indian YouTube for the last two to three years that a bunch of people who are supposedly health gurus, they're saying that if you're buying these famous brands, international brands sitting here in India, you're going to get it fake. Well, I disagree. I believe there is a vested interest behind all this propaganda and here's why. But before we go in, let me just assure you one thing and you can try it out. If you know how to find out an authorized seller for any of the international brands, you can rest assured you're not going to be duped. That is guaranteed. So to get to the bottom of this, we first need to see what's the lifeline of any health guru or anyone who doesn't want to do YouTube for creative purposes, but basically has a business in mind. So here's what it starts about two to three years of lifespan. And within that, you can reach this goal. So that the first point or in the inception of the whole journey is when this person does some sort of a transformation or becomes really fit, shredded, no matter which means they follow, but they do that. And that catches a lot of eye and slowly they start telling things, giving tutorials and stuff and nothing related to supplements or anything bad. Everything becomes good at that point and they tell pop people how to do things and then they soon get regarded as God. So this is the being God phase. This takes about one, one and a half years if you're really dedicated. Now, after this point, they start shifting their godly nature of suggesting really good stuff to actually telling which is not so good. And this is the preaching stage where it's around six months of duration where they, where they tell people that there are different n number of things which are not good. And why they say not good is because while they're doing it for about six months a period, they're planning for the six months ahead while they are actually planning their business. So there are existing products in the market, may it be clothes uh, that is apparels or there are supplements or whatever it is. They want to great get into the market and tell people that the existing ones has these flaws. And quite interestingly, anyone who comes after them tells whatever was before has these flaws and then their program, their supplement, their products are much superior. So then when the preaching stage kind of takes in play, takes place and people believe in them, they launch their product. And this is when they start earning a lot of money. And you'd ask, why do they do that? Well, the answer is simple. YouTube is not basically a sustainable income. See, this YouTube doesn't tell us that it's your job. There's no pension. There is no gratuity, nothing like that. Not a stable job or something like that. Of course, it's a good source of earning a lot of money if you are doing good on YouTube, if you're a great creator. But YouTube's primary job is to get creators, advertisers and viewers together. Its job is not to promise people to take care of them when they're old in their old age. You're getting the idea, right? So anyone who's doing YouTube, not for the creative purposes, but having a business plan in mind is doing a fantastic job. And that's exactly that what they should do. And this is what they do. And that's how they reach from about two to two and a half years. They reach from inception, having a really good physique to running a really good business, which runs maybe from 10 lakh to 100 lakhs, whatever it is. But that, that, that's the turnover they target. And then they use YouTube to get to that point might ask that why is there a pattern for these gurus to say that everything that comes from the United States, Canada, Australia, all these places, you have a higher chance of getting those things as fake. And why not they target the really good running Indian brands like Grizzly, Nutrimed, as it is, My Feet Fuel. I'm just naming a few. There are so many. Sinew is there. Um, Neutral Life. So many things are there. Mac Pro. So why don't they target these things and they keep on targeting these things? There's a simple math behind it, nothing else. It's all about margin. Now here's the numbers and that's where you would be much clearer. Why do they do this selective targeting? See, if you're targeting any of the Indian brands and you're planning to launch a product, then you have to compare the price of those products with yours and the market being so tight in here, specifically in the whey protein market, Every whey protein producer, wherever they started in India, if this is an Indian company, it's selling somewhere around 1000 to 1500 rupees per kilo, which is the, the, the rough edge where this, these prices vary. 
Wherever, if you look at the international brands, even though they have suppressed their price because of these all Indian brands coming into picture, still they sell about 2,500 to 3,000 rupees per kg minimum. These are even more costlier if you go for some fancy brands like uh, uh, Jim Stepani's band, that, that's really costly, stuff like that. So if you target this specific group and kind of don't even talk about it as if they don't exist, then this is your market and you're a good preacher, right? Because you've established yourself as a god. So if this, if you preach people that these are the ones that come out really fake, then when you launch your product, you get to sell it not at this competition, but it, you can sell it at this competition. So you can price it somewhere around 2,500 and this would be the cheapest in the market. And while you've already told people these are really good stuff, so the mine is kind of comparable to them, but these are fake. There's a big chance you're gonna get these things fake. There's so much fake going on and who's gonna spend 3,500, 5,000 bucks on fake supplements? Whereas these gurus claim to give you the actual stuff from their own warehouse or they, they kind of sell it to you directly. So this is, I'm not talking about any one or two people who are doing this. This, everybody does that. Every health guru in India, eventually they have to get a business plan and this is what they do. Now, think about this. If they had done the competition with this, these Indian brands and they said, it's good, bad, it's fake or whatever. They had to sell this product at a margin of somewhere around 1100 and 1200 or even 900 per kg. So think of the profit they would be making, not much, right? So th what they do is they very logically get rid of these products and preach people to concentrate only on these products and prove these are fake. These are good, but these are fake. But they can rely on something better or same, but and they can be assured that this is not going to be fake. And that's how, that's that's actually their USP for doing the business. The reason I'm talking about all these things is because I'm a huge believer that Indian supplement brands could be really good. They do adulteration. They sometimes don't give you exactly what they promise, but there are brands which are good. And every day they're trying to do even better. What I want to see is a situation where all these health gurus come and do offer their products at the price point of these products that are sold in India because when they say their product is manufactured or imported from USA, most whey proteins are imported from either USA or Canada. There's no exception. Manufacturing it in India and then making it is hugely costly, much costlier than if you just import those things because there are, there are huge exporters available for whey protein. It's not really that difficult to find the source. Rather, if you do it in India, you get the source from India. There will be lot, your whole supply chain you have to establish all over again, whereas it's actually established out there. And the other reason why I say is that India is not really that rich of a country when it comes to individuals. Yeah, we have really rich people, but we also have really poor people. The access to good health and good supplement, I think, should be the right of everyone. And when I say that, I don't mean that the access to a good supplement or product should be the right of everyone and then everyone should spend a bunch of rupees to buy this or this product. What I mean is that the products should really become that good that they can be bought by students or people who cannot really afford costly stuff but still get benefits out of that from Indian products. So you can say I, I want to see these sort of products and all these Indian products do really well and give people a lot of benefit no matter which brand they are. I'm not promoting any brand. No matter which brand they are, if they're from India, see it's a nice homogeneous business circle you create. You get product at low price. Um, these products are from Indian companies so they do well. We give them business and in return they give us perks like making their product better, getting better flavors out in the market, sometimes giving us discounts and stuff like that. If you keep on buying things like uh, you know, Ultimate Nutrition, Gold Standard Way, stuff like that. There's nothing wrong. These are fantastic product. But you or me buying a bunch of those stuff doesn't give them much of an opportunity to come out and give us really good offers or give us something return in perks. Whereas these companies can do that. I personally have seen that we can reach out to each of these companies, their directors, their CEOs, or whoever runs the company, and talk to them, tell them uh, what's wrong, what's right, give them proper feedback. That's a fantastic channel, which I don't think really exists in here. And if you want to get there, you probably would need a medium and that would again insert a health guru or somebody in between and the whole thing would be oh, kind of, you know, messed up. 
So if I'm trying to say anything at all, then I'm saying that the whole thing that you see on the internet about these international brands being fake and you, there's very less chance you're gonna get some authentic product is actually a scam. Or if I don't call it a scam, in a really good way I could put it that it's a nice business idea. I've purchased product from a lot of vendors on Amazon, on Flipkart, and if you're really diligent about choosing the vendor, if you know how to talk to the importer and ask them who are all authorized to sell your product, then there are very less chances, I mean there is no chance, zero chance you're gonna get some duped product. Then why not buy those products and get actual international standards, or buy products at Indian price and get Indian standards, rather than buy Indian products at international price? That was my point. I didn't want to hurt anyone's feeling. I'm not targeting anybody. I'm just saying what I felt. And if you feel differently, let me know in the comment section. Or if you feel that what I'm saying makes sense and the word should be spread, do share this video. You don't have to subscribe. All right, do share this video with people, with your friends and everyone. And let's hear it from the community because this channel is all about creating a fantastic community of fitness enthusiasts collaboratively build a much truthful environment. I hope you liked it. Let me know in the comment section. Have an awesome life, folks. Ciao.